I'm really looking forward to the next few moments because Tom here is going to take me on a tour of Star GB's showroom. And it's going to be one of the last times it's going to be in this building because they're moving soon. I know, that's quite exciting news as well because the new building's going to be quite a spectacle. Okay, so during this open house event, the applications team get tasked with making something for the event. There is a prize giveaway. Now this year, they have made this. It's a micrometer that is made on each of the machines in this room to really showcase a, what the machines can do and show them off really, you know, in terms of what parts can go on to a star sliding head, but also showcase and show off the creativity and the brains of the apps team. Now, there's some amazing parts in here and we're going to get to see these as we walk around, but yeah. we're going to start this tour at the SP32, which is quite funny because I'm going to put this back in my pocket because they're not making anything on that on here. <laughs> So everything I've told you is not right. No, just one machine. They're not. They're making, making this oh, wow. demo to showcase what the machine can do. Now, some of the operations we've got is we've got some quite deep drilling, slots, threads, slots more, and just some general machining. But they're showing what they can do on this machine. That's done in one hit. One hit. One hit. That comes off complete. We've got engraving. We've even got some very small grooving. I love the fact that, you know, what you would kind of traditionally put on a machine like this, you know, we're seeing customers have prismatic components coming off star sliding head machines, aren't we? Oh, you some know, of the things you can do on these machines now are just, it gets to the point where if you can program it, you can machine it. And as long as the machine capacity can, you know, oh, work yeah. with it. Please yeah. don't go and put some three meter bar <laughs> on here. That may not work. Yeah, maybe not. But right. when you've got something this size, absolutely perfect brilliant right let's keep going so we're going to try and see as much as possible it's been a busy day today it has and i've got a question for you as um, we walk down here you see quite a lot of suppliers so yes. why do you think star have took the decision to have all their suppliers here for their open house i think i actually know the answer to this is i think that everyone every machine shop has its different needs and i think that the machines alone can do so much but having suppliers they're there to take it next level and almost tailor turnkey projects and different components to work with different machine shops in the best Absolutely way possible spot on. I hope that's so. spot on that's you literally near enough mirrored exactly what alex said yes. and it was all about giving the customer a full solution not just yeah. giving them part of the puzzle no. giving them the complete puzzle now we're going to see the micrometer being made as we walk around. So first off, we're going to start on the SB20R2, which is making, we're going to call it a pin, but it's not just a pin. Some of the tool paths on here are quite difficult, let's say. The keyways are really small. The thread is tiny. So trying to get that thread perfect on thousands and thousands of parts will always be a problem because it's quite a fine thread. And you've also got a really, it's not a deep hole drill, but yeah. when this is made from 316 stainless, which is quite a stringy material, to get, I want to say maybe M3, M4 thread, yeah. all the way down, down that the shaft, yeah, I'll show you this. is no small fee. So again, it's showing what the machine can do. And we're really pushing our cameraman, Chris, to the limits here as well. Sorry, oh, he loves Chris. it. He loves it. <laughs> there you go. Um, I just want to say as well about the finish. Okay. Because the finish of that part, this has come straight out of the machine. No one's touched it. No one's... The, the finish is absolutely lovely. For 316, which, which can be a real pig to machine, Yeah. that is really nice. Now, one more thing I want to mention about this machine before we move on is yeah. the HydroFeed system. Now... Alec was, they only do one size of this, which yeah. is why it looks quite big. Yeah. Um, but Alec was saying he really likes this system because they can program 200 parts into one section and then one part into the next. Ah. Why? Measurement. Yes. 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 So every 200 or up to them, it's their choice, they can decide how many parts they make before they inspect one to make sure when the parts are done, they're all right. See, tailoring the solutions exactly. to everybody's needs. Now, it's cool. 
the SD26 Type-E. This has easily got my favourite part of the demo on it. Oh, I know yes. what this is. Is it the so, ratchet? Yes. So, everybody will know when you use a micrometer, there's the ratchet on it. Yes. Now, they've actually made the ratchet on this machine using the B-axis to program and machine oh, wow. the internal part of this. Now, obviously that's quite a hard thing to, to machine. Thank you. But they're actually making two parts, a male and a female, yeah. that have to mate perfectly. And if you oh. see that, you cannot even see the joint. Now, you said something to me when we did our walkthrough. Yeah. What machine do you think? I'd that... EDM. I'd wire that. That's exactly. what I would think of. But that precision to make these two parts fit you that yeah. perfectly. You can... And obviously, that gives you the ratchet. Yeah, that's Again, clever. thank you. Using programming the B axis, and that is milled. They're actually milling it. That's fascinating. And the finish gets me because the finish is just. But Alex was saying on here is <laughs> this machine, or obviously all star machines, can hold microns yeah. over thousands of parts. So once they've got this machine right, yeah. they've never changed it. And they've created, well, why, why change a good thing? hundreds and thousands of these. They've never altered a single thing on the machine and Love they're that. all coming out right. Tom, I've got to ask you a question. Okay. Are you excited? We're we're off, we're off, she's running off. We've got to move Where are we going, where are we going? You're excited, aren't you? I do. Now Just this... Just down the camera. This. Do you love this? <laughs> do you? This is cool as hell. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool. Now, this doesn't look like a sliding head because... It's not, it's a fixed head machine. Basically, Star have gone um, into the market with fixed head machines. I don't know if you know this already, but if you're a Star user, then you've ultimately got that interoperability from your sliding head machines over to your fixed head machines. What, what have you Right, noticed? we have a slight problem. What? Somebody's stolen my, um, <laughs> my show bit. But it oh. doesn't matter because we'll use this. Yes. So, on this machine, they are making, uh, they're making this end part here. Which is something else which is quite unusual because I said it earlier, a lot of prismatic components, what you wouldn't typically put onto you know, a turning center exactly. is what these machines well, are capable of. On that note, this is being machined. Sorry, Chris, I'm trying to get this right. So this has been machined main spindle to sub spindle. Yeah. So they're actually getting rid of quite a lot of material. But once you've machined all this, how do you hold it? So they're actually yeah. clamping it in the sub spindle. Oh. So you don't need to have a round part to clamp. They're clamping it across there to finish this side off. See. Which is and again, that's coming out fully complete, engraved. Again, it's look at it. What look you can it. do now. Before we move on, we have to mention the LNS section. Ah, okay. Yeah. So they're showcasing here a LNS solution. Yeah. So you've got the bar feed, the mist extractor, but also the coolant pump as well. Mm. So this is producing. I've got, sorry, I'm trying. 70 bars of pressure, not only for the main spindle, but for the sub spindle as well. Okay. Which is just great. Barmy. It's brilliant. <laughs> I love it. Barmy. Now, the SR32 J3 Type B. Now, you will have seen this machine everywhere. Yeah, this is one of the most popular machines. So, this is their sell. most popular machine. Yeah. You've done endless videos on this. Um, but then they've brought out a different one. So they're okay. showcasing two things on this. Full washdown from inside. Okay, I'll let the camera. And then also a washdown gun. Okay. Now I've never seen a washdown gun on a sliding head before and I've never actually seen full internal washdown wash of the machine. Because, why, why is this? Well, working with sliding heads we know is a bit of a nightmare because it's all oil. Yeah. So obviously you, your hands get oily, everything. Goes, so if you can use the machine to clean itself, yeah, yeah, yeah. One it's job better for your programmer, your operator, because they're not having to get in and clean all that out. Yeah, okay. Now, next, not really what I wanted <laughs> it's like to you're show. you're modeling today. Yeah, but that's not really what. <laughs> um, my question for you is, obviously, 
some of these can go up to nine axes. Yeah. How do you program it? That's a mind blow, that is. That's <laughs> like, how do you even, if you were new to star, uh, you know, sliding head technology, there's so many axes, I don't even know where people, and I think this is what we asked a lot of people years ago, it was getting their head around, how can I use a star machine, a sliding head machine? And again, like we were saying when we first started, there's not many things you can't make on one of these yeah. if you can program it. Yeah. And if there's some part, some of the parts get really technical, they'll use CAD CAM. Yeah. But they have their own system now, their NC Assist, yeah. which is obviously helps you program the machine, get up and running. But they've now brought out a new version. Every year they update it, and yeah. this is their newest version, which gives you full 3D model simulation. And Alec was telling me earlier that if you see it on there, yeah. that's what will happen on there. That's confidence. It's a lot of, um, and I, I don't know if I'm saying the right thing or not, but in my head, when people talk about like a digital twin, it's almost like you, you've got what's going on, you know, on a, a software like that, and then you've got confidence to put that into the machine. I don't know if I've said the technical, yeah. that, technicalities right e Essentially, now. yeah, if you, if you can model it and you can simulate it, yeah. then that's going to give you a lot more confidence to put it in the machine and press go. Yeah. Obviously, please don't just put a program in and press go. No. Do your checks. Yeah. yeah. But you're going to be a lot more confident with how complex parts can be. You want to know they're going to be right. Yeah. So being able to see it before you machine it is going to help a lot of customers run these machines more efficiently. Just to add to that, and before you go on to, I think we'll probably stop the tour here, but um, I have been out to customers, and it's interesting when you speak to them and they say, oh, we, we, we've learned about the machine and we've had it for a few months now, but in a scale of one to 10, have we pushed it to its limits? Well, we're only about three. So they often say they've got a long way to go in terms of you know, upping that skill level, but they're like, we're fully prepared and it's just a slow, it's a learning curve. I think that, I think you're absolutely right. It's a learning curve. Yeah. Nobody buys one of these for the first time and then is running the most complex parts at a thousand off straight away. Yeah. They learn and, and they gain confidence. The machine can do so much more than a lot of people may realize, but having the confidence and the technical know-how of programming that is a completely yeah. different story. But again, before we move on, one that's thing. where stars, applications, engineers come in. Yeah. And you have a bit of a story about something on a machine. Oh, yeah. oh, oh no, okay, yeah, you, you fret me, thank uh -huh. you. You're doing my job for me, thank you, Tom. Don't you worry. Um, just, it's really interesting, one of the case studies we went to the other day, the guy said, Literally, the applications guy went, here's my business card, put it on a magnet, on the machine. He said, call me whenever you need. And when they have needed help um, or support, they just pick up the phone and, and that's, and he said, it's almost like we're not part of the family, he said, he's like, oh, part of the club. That's what he said. He's like, I'm like part of the club now, which is such a nice. But does that not show you? Faith and, yeah, exactly. and support. Exactly, because if, if I put my business card on something and went, ring me if you've got any problem, yeah. I've got to know in the back Midnight. of that, my mind, <laughs> <laughs> I've got to know in the back of my mind that anything you ring me with, I can help you with. Okay, I'm giggling. Come but on. Well, no, no, no. Right. Have you ever seen a two screen configuration? This is new to me. So, this is the new Blum T Max okay. um, monitoring system for the machine. And this is really clever. You can have quite a lot of sensors dotted around all over the machine, but the one we've got here is actually only got the two sensors on it, showcasing uh, vibration in the bar feed. This to me is preventative. Preventative problems. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So if you've got vibration happening, which is obviously them coming through into the main spindle, obviously that's going to give you a chattery finish maybe or other problems. Or if you've got tool wear on the sub spindle, so your parts aren't holding their tolerance yeah. or may even the tool maybe is about to break yeah you would rather stop it change it get it up and running before that happens yeah. because then you're gonna before you go and scrap other parts exactly yeah, you're yeah, gonna scrap you less parts or you're gonna be able to put a new tool in and bring that tolerance back in you may not yeah. even scrap any parts yeah so to be able to see problems happening before, before they happen yeah is going to world we live in now people confidence who are running lights out yeah. Because you can set it to stop the machine if it doesn't think something's right. So why would you not want to stop a problem before it stops? Yeah, absolutely. I think we've got to stop this filming though because we need to have a little lie down after that. 
Tom, for you to absorb that information is pretty incredible. So thank you. Thank you. It was good fun. It was enjoying it. Thank you, Tom, for <laughs> taking me and you on a tour around this fabulous showroom. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.